Good evening, everyone. Some people are getting creative this holiday season using social media to find those who need a little extra help. Valley News Team's JC Dodd spoke with a woman who's using Venmo to make a difference. A social media challenge connecting helpers with those who need it. The hashtag Venmo challenge has given people like Savannah Inlow a way to help others get through the holidays. I thought it would be a wonderful idea to jump in on this bandwagon and start the giving process. After seeing the challenge on Facebook, Inlow received a few donations from strangers. I thought it was really neat, so I just kind of gave those back to the community. Scrolling through the Pay It Forward Fargo Moorhead West Fargo Facebook group, Families in need, single mothers, whatever helps, whether it's a dollar, five dollars, or twenty. Enlo has been there before. I first-handedly know what it feels like to struggle, even for your next meal or if you're going to have a roof over your head. While your intentions may be pure, wanting to help. Of course, we, as human beings, we are that that pulls that tugs at our heartstrings, and so we want to give. Some people in the group have posted their Venmo usernames, but don't live in the area. So Vang warns to be cautious and scope out the people before you donate. Because scammers know that our feelings and our emotions are this certain way during this time of year, they will prey on that. Still, Inlo says it's worth the risk. I try not to think like that and just think they're going to do it for the best especially when it means watching the community come together. It makes me feel even prouder to say that I'm from the Fargo-Moorhead area because everybody is so loving and giving. JC Dodd, Valley News Live. For more ways to make sure your donation gets to a neighbor in need, head to our website, valleynewslive.com. If you or someone you know has travel plans tonight, we want to let you know that roads in eastern North Dakota are still pretty compacted from this weekend's snow. North Dakota DOT reporting snow and ice covering I-29 from Fargo to the Canadian border, and there's still some drifting as you head west. In Minnesota, a few areas are showing partially covered, specifically Highway 10 and Highway 59. While most areas in the valley have been cleared, some roads do remain slick. For a look at our weather tonight, let's go to our chief meteorologist, Hutch Johnson. Hutch? Mike Stacy, thank you and thank you for joining us on Valley News Live tonight. We'll take a look at some of these snowfall totals generally along and north of Highway 10 in Minnesota and Interstate 94 is where the majority of the snow fell and many of those areas, including Fargo and Grand Forks, saw four to eight inches, but there was a narrow band of eight to 12 plus with a few of you getting over 14 inches of snow with that deep snow that meant the cold air settled in and that's what happened today. Low temperatures this morning, air temperatures between five and 15 below zero for most with wind chills that were brutal between 30 and 40 below with those winds gusting over 50 miles per hour at times creating blizzard conditions. It's very icy out there. Take a look at this. You can still see the glistening off of the Luther Family Ford lot there. So take it easy tonight. And here's a look at peak temperatures today. We made it up to 7 in Fargo, 10 in Gwinter, but stayed below zero up in that can do area. And here's a look at your current readings. The black line on Hutch's map, that's the zero degree line. So we're below zero. Along Highway 2, Thief River, 7 below, 6 below in Langdon, 7 above in Sisseton. And I do expect warming to happen here tonight. As clouds move in and a few flakes move in, that will allow temperatures to warm up a bit. But we'll drop off quickly in the first hours tonight. So we're going to go in the next couple of hours in Fargo below 0, 1 to 5 degrees below. Then we'll start a warming trend as the clouds move in. Best chance of snow will be south. Where it will be cold all night long will be up north. But you too will see a rise in temperatures around that midnight hour or after as we go towards daybreak. Now, we have a warming trend, but it's a slow go. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about some beautiful temperatures again. I don't think 40s or 50s for most of us, but we're going in the right direction. And despite those temperatures, we've really been thrust into the grips of winter now. Yeah, it was a slap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. thanks. You bet. Crews will be doing snow removal in the downtown area tonight into tomorrow morning on North and South Streets beginning at 2 a.m. Vehicles parked in no parking areas will be impounded. This includes all streets between 2nd Avenue South and 7th Avenue North from 2nd Street to University Drive. You can still park on downtown avenues. Those are east to west streets and you can use any of the parking ramps or surface lots downtown. City crews want to remind you to stay a safe distance from snow plows, especially in the downtown area. Meanwhile, the U.S. Postal Service is reminding you to help postal carriers by clearing snow and ice from the walkways, driveways, porches, and especially areas around mailboxes. With your help, mail carriers can provide the best delivery service possible as safely as possible. 
One year after her brutal murder of a toddler, a Fargo woman has been sentenced to spend the next three decades in prison. Despite the wishes of those in the community and several of 15 year old Mika's family members, 38 year old Brandy Adelke did not receive a life sentence. As Mika's father told prosecutors, that's not what he wanted for his daughter's killer. I will forgive her but I would never forget what she's done. He's like, me, me giving her a life sentence is not gonna bring my daughter back. Adelke will be eligible for her five years of supervised probation around 2045. In Clay County, a grand jury has indicted this man, Idris Haji Mohammed, with first degree murder in connection with the shooting of 32 year old Abdi Abdi in Moorhead on September 10th. If convicted, he faces life in prison. Haji Mohammed bailed out on September 15th with a $1 million bond, but after being arrested and arraigned on Thursday, bail was increased to $3 million cash or bond without conditions. Also charged in this case is Ibrahim Isaac, who is accused of aiding and abetting in connection to the murder. If convicted, he also faces life in prison. Full details of the shooting are available on our website, valleynewslive.com. A Fargo man has taken a plea deal for killing his girlfriend's Pomeranian. Court documents say 29-year-old Kyrie Hill hit the dog with his hand, causing it to hit a wall in the living room. Hill accepted a plea for misdemeanor animal abuse. Hill told police he was upset with the dog because it was eating his food. A Cass County judge sentenced Hill to 360 days in jail and one year of unsupervised probation. Court records also say Hill will have to pay restitution to his now ex-girlfriend. The search continues tonight for a driver who fled from authorities after an early morning stop. It happened around 1 a.m. in rural Moorhead on 57th Avenue North of Dilworth. Authorities say several tactics were used to try and stop the vehicle, which wound up in the ditch. Afterwards, the driver, who has not yet been identified, 41-year-old Julie Oliver, was arrested for possession of a controlled substance and possession of burglary tools in connection with the incident. If you have any information on the location or identity of the driver, contact Clay County Sheriff's Office. A fight at Denny's yesterday morning resulted in an injury and an arrest. Officers were called to the Denny's on 13th Avenue South just before 3 a.m. for a fight involving multiple people inside the restaurant. Dispatch was provided a description of a man with one hand down the front of his pants threatening to shoot people. Officers arrested Martavis Ivy for terrorizing, but they didn't find a gun on him. A former assistant coach for Oak Grove School has pleaded guilty to sharing child pornography. 34-year-old Daniel Stowe is charged with possession of child porn and promoting an obscene sexual performance by a minor. Court documents say that investigators found messages with pictures and videos of explicit acts with children on his Twitter account. After a search of his home, he admitted to being the account owner of the Twitter page. More details on these charges are on our website. Go to valleynewslive.com. No sentencing date has been set. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz today announced a new initiative to recruit, train, and deploy at least 1,000 new certified nursing assistants for long-term care facilities. He plans to have them in place by the end of January. The effort will mean recruiting qualified Minnesotans and enrolling them in certification courses at Minnesota State campuses. Once trained, the CNAs will be eligible for employment at long-term care facilities in the state that are facing severe staffing shortages. 16 colleges are currently training approximately 400 members of the National Guard for deployment as emergency temporary nursing assistance. Federal American Rescue Plan funding will pay for that training. According to data from Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development, nursing assistants are the sixth highest in-demand job in the state. Later on Valley